I don't want to uh, imply that I don't think ad lib feeding, say around flushing or, or actual breeding or maybe early in growth is still important. But I think there's some stages, let's say, you know, in the middle of their growth cycle where we can maybe restrict them slightly to allow skeletal development, lean tissue to development to match their chronological age. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Hyatt Frobos, a commercial director for Giga Technologies. So Hyatt, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me today, Clayton. Uh, I'm currently with Giga Technologies and and been uh, working with them since I finished my PhD in swine nutrition and in 2015 at Kansas State University. And I've been working primarily in helping the industry transition to group housing, as well as working on precision feeding opportunities and particularly gestating and lactating sows. One of the reasons that I think we're here today is to talk about kind of a newer enterprise for our company where we're working in the growing pig space. And I particularly want to focus maybe on how that pertains to guilt retention and guilt development. And I think our subject matter for today fits that well. Yeah, good transition. Because I was going to say, I know you and your company are experts on precision feeding strategies um, and technologies specifically for gilts and sows. So while we're talking about gilt development, I guess to start us off, what do you see as a needed area of an improvement within the swine industry in regards to gilt or sow feeding? Well, I think we've got a, a huge opportunity to just get more of these gilts to enter the herd and stay in the herd till their third parity. Um, some of the more recent data that we've seen is showing about a 30% loss in gilts that don't make it past P2. And I think that's a huge area of opportunity for us as, as we're, we're spending a lot of time as an industry decrying the sow mortality and the, the lack of, of animals to be able to survive in the herd. And I think we can take a, a closer look at how we develop these gilts and bring them up before entry. And I think growth management is part of that conversation. Gotcha. So with precision feeding and growth management that you kind of already touched on, what are some of the opportunities and risks of incorporating feed limitation and growing gilts? Yeah. So this is a a little bit of a contentious subject. And I think, I think overall we've seen the industry transition to ad lib feeding throughout most gilt development in the industry. And, and some of this is because of the high lean genotypes that we have today. Uh, data from 10, 15, 20 years ago was indicating that we weren't able to get enough intake into some of these newer genotypes to meet breed targets without ad libitum feeding. I think we've seen the intake capacity of these gilts based on the data that's been published increase by 15 to 20 percent during the same time and I think it's important for us to maybe go back and relook at whether we do need to be given these gilts ad libitum feed access throughout their life, because we're getting some downstream challenges with gilts that are too heavy at first mating and some gilts that have some problems with regard to structure and body condition when they get to that farrowing performance side. And then this is part of the reason that they're exiting the herd a lot faster, or maybe not even farrowing their first, first litter. So in terms of precision feeding with those gilts and limit feeding them some, how do you propose the industry successfully implement this approach in commercial systems? Yeah, and I think, I think this is the, the crux of it, right, is sometimes we, we don't want to change because we, we're, we got a comfort zone that we work with. And feeding gilts like finishers is the, the convenient way to do it because we've got a lot of people that understand how to feed finishers and how to design finishing barns for success. And I think there's a couple different options that we could go down, and that's part of where our research needs to go next, but we need some people to try it too. A, one of the challenges is, is being able to multi-phase feed these gilts. And in, in some farms, we really struggle to get them phase-fed the way that we would even deliver diets to a finishing pig. So using precision feeding and blend feeding technologies is one option to be able to get the right diet to the right gilt at the right time. And so having some of those blending technologies at the pen level will unlock some potential in terms of diet complexity or or improving diets at the right time. But I also think using some electronic feeding options 
opens the door to be able to not have to ad libitum feed guilts at specific stages of growth. I don't want to uh, imply that I don't think ad lib feeding, say around flushing or, or actual breeding or maybe early in growth is still important. But I think there's some stages, let's say, you know, in the middle of their growth cycle where we can maybe restrict them slightly to allow skeletal development, lean tissue to development to match their chronological age. And there's been recent data published, uh, most recently uh, by Niblet and others at Midwest Animal Science Convention this year, showing no consequences in their breeding success, even when we restrict feed these gilts at certain stages of growth. And I think we should take a closer look at that because some of the downstream benefits of those gilts from a structure and body composition standpoint are pretty compelling. Not to mention just the fact that if we can breed these gilts at a lighter weight, we're probably also going to have a better chance of minimizing their maintenance costs long term in the herd. And I guess also reducing their feed costs in gilt development as well, which is certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Gotcha. So what downstream impacts would this have on gilts as they enter the breeding herd? You already mentioned that we're seeing heavier gilts um, come into the breeding herd. So if we implemented this feeding strategy and reduced the overall weight of the gilts entering the herd, how big of an impact do you think that can have? Well, I think managed properly, we're likely to see a higher percentage of replace of replacement gilts in the GDU successfully entering the herd. We can likely reduce the variation in those gilts as they enter the herd. And then I think more likely we're looking at long-term retention because of those skeletal benefits, maybe muscle, you know, body composition benefits of how they go through their first farrowing cycle. So that's what we're ultimately targeting is right now we're seeing 30% of our gilts not make it past P2, and only about 30% of the gilts that enter the herd make it out to P6. And I think we can improve both of those numbers with some different management of these gilts prior to entry into the breeding herd. Gotcha. So a couple more questions to kind of wrap us up here as we get to the end of the podcast. So with precision feeding, if this is something you see as an opportunity for growth in the industry, what are some of the risks we can see when incorporating this? Like if it was so simple and easy and obvious, why hasn't this already been incorporated on most commercial systems? And then a second question to follow along with that, to slow their growth, how would you look at incorporating fiber in the diet uh, along with precision feeding? Yeah, those are great questions, Clayton. And that's, that's usually where we end up in the conversation with a lot of systems. And I think most nutritionists listening in would comment that, that fiber is part of this equation. And I think we've got to use fiber strategically in gilt development. But what we often find is, is that fiber may be a limiter, may, may have limited availability in certain systems. Uh, from a feed mill and bin management standpoint, sometimes fiber just isn't available in the volumes or the ingredient types that we really want to look for. Um, but beyond that, I think we're seeing in a lot of these genotypes that even with bulking up these diets, these gilts can actually eat through the additional bulk and still get to a caloric density that they're looking for. And so we've seen a lot of these diet manipulations with fiber not be fully effective at reducing these gilts growth rate enough to minimize the problems in structure and body, you know, body condition. But, you know, where, where maybe a mechanical or a precision fe electronic feeding option comes into play, now we can maybe change the way those gilts can access feed so we can restrict their feed intake to something, let's say, between 80 and 90 percent of ad libitum. One, one of the challenges that people are, will often throw at me is, how do we prevent vices? You know, we, we don't want to get aggression around the feed station. And how do we maximize access to that feed station? And that's where I think there's going to be some additional research to, to fine tune the, the right amount of restriction to achieve the desired goal without causing problems in terms of vices and aggression or increased variation. And I think the other part too is just continuing to get people comfortable with the use of feeding technologies. We don't always have the same level of staff quality or, or just hours on site at some of these developing pig sites than we do maybe on a sow farm. And so there's a, still a little apprehension about can we use the technology effectively and what happens if we have maintenance or troubleshooting concerns. And and that's something that over time, the electronic feeding system, you know, uh, options need to showcase their reliability and their ease of troubleshooting 
in order to build trust in the system that these are something that can be applied widespread in a commercial environment. Giga Technologies manufactures just all swine precision feeding systems, designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. The Gestal feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Hyatt, for coming on the show and sharing all your expertise with us. Thank you. Appreciate the conversation. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.